My name is Yannick Blayenhoeft. I'm professor at the Institute of Neuroscience, UCL Brussels. The research paper I'm going to present to you today is published in the May 2017 uh, issue of DMCN. It is entitled Upper and Lower Extremity Training for Children with Bilateral Cerebral Palsy, a Quasi-Randomized Trial. Intensive intervention requires actually a high motor engagement time, that's the first thing, um, but also to follow um, all the principles of uh, motor skill learning. It also requires um, to uh, be in a child-friendly environment and to be in a hands-off concept, so it's only voluntary motor control. So far, that kind of um, therapy has been applied uh, mainly with children with unilateral cerebral palsy. We all know CIMT, constraint induced movement therapy, or habit by manual intensive therapy. A few years ago, with my friend and colleague Andy Gordon, um, we thought that uh, maybe applying both by manual intensive intensive therapy and a lower extremity component in addition might be efficient for both upper and lower extremity. We tested this with children with unilateral cerebral palsy first and we saw changes both in upper and in lower extremity. Subsequently, and that's the study we're talking about, uh, we decided to move to children with bilateral cerebral palsy because there was not a lot of study showing efficient intervention for these children. So in this study, we involved 10 children in a treatment group and 10 children in a control group. These children had bilateral cerebral palsy with a GMFCS from 2 to 4 most of the children being with a GMFCS of three, meaning they could walk with a, a walker of that or that kind of device. So the results of this study, we were quite astonished because uh, we had so many results actually. For upper extremity, if you see the first part of this figure, you have the PD, which is a questionnaire that is answered by the parents. The Abilen Kids is also a questionnaire on manual ability that is answered by the parents. And we have the Jepson Taylor test of hand function, that is a test of manipulation that is measured in seconds. So the lower the score, the best uh, the performance of the child. And the boxing block is also a test of manipulation, manipulating blocks. And uh, the more blocks you can pass from one part to another of a box, the better score you have. So for this test of manipulation, you can see here the two groups. So first the control group that is uh, in gray and with a line that is dotted. And second, our treatment group that is represented in black. So between the first and the second measurement, there are two weeks. Um, so for the treatment group, these two weeks are two weeks of treatment, six and a half hours a day uh, for 13 days. And for the control group, they are just encountering their usual conventional therapy. And then both controls and um, children in the treatment group were subsequently um, followed at three months. For the PD, as you can see, children of the treatment group are improving a lot during the two weeks and this improvement is even pursuing afterwards while the controls are perfectly stable. For the Abilene kids, we can see exactly the same effect, control stables and improvement that is pursuing at three months. The Jepson Taylor test function on the less affected hand, we can see that there is an improvement because the scores are decreasing in our treatment group and these results are maintained at three months. The controls are stable once again. And for the box and block, there is an improvement after treatment that is maintained at three months while controls are stable. If we go in the lower part of this uh, figure, you can see 
the results for gross motor abilities. And the first is the gross motor function measure, which is represented in percent on the left. And you can see that children are improving during the intensive intervention and are pursuing improvement once again at three months while the controls are stable. On the right side, we can see the pediatric balance scale. So can we also improve the balance of the children? And there again, you can see improvement during uh, the training, inter the intervention time. And then uh, we, have a, um, we are maintaining these results at three months. Controls again are stable. The six minute walking test, which is the distance the children can um, manage in six minutes, how, how far can they walk in six minutes? And we can see that this has also improved uh, in two weeks and maintained in three months. And the Abbe Loco, which is the last um, part of this figure, the Abbe Loco is the locomotor ability of the children and it is a questionnaire answered by the parents. And once again, we can see that it has changed after intervention and maintained at three months while children of the control group are perfectly stable. So um, the treatment actually includes a lot of everyday life activities like eating or going to the bathroom that will be totally integrated in the treatment. In conclusion, Intensive intervention principles can be applied with success in children with bilateral CP and uh, we can change uh, their motor level, uh, their activity level for both upper and lower extremities. I would like to thank all my co-authors and especially the team of uh, Columbia University. We work uh, on uh, multi-site design and so part of this was done at Columbia and part in Brussels. Uh, I would like also to thank all children and families who participated to this trial. Thanks a lot.